Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cardiff Central Rugby Podcast. I'm Harley as ever. I'm joined this week by Dan. No Carwin, he's he's feeling the lurgy from that Wales squad announcement, uh, which we'll get into a bit later. But first of all, how are you doing, Dan? Yeah, I'm all good. My my theory on Carwin, as we just to put chucks about there, is that I reckon he was at the front of Taylor Swift last night and screamed too much. He lost his voice. That's... I wish I wish I was that. In that <laughs> <position>. <laughs> uh, right. So, no. So just moving on. So very quickly, a bit of housekeeping. We've had some re-signings. So. Will Davis, Will Davis King's extended, as has Davis Hughes, who's extended his sort of, well, it wasn't really a loan deal, was it? But his short-term deal uh, last time. And then the really big news we had today was Razor Ray himself has re-signed for another year. Uh, but feel free to take him in it, whichever order you want. Yeah, I mean, I've got to start with Ray, really, haven't you? Um, I just what a legend he's gonna be 39 during next season which is uh i mean it's mad but as as Fau felice said in his video that the club put out ages but a number and uh he's he's not not got the pace he perhaps once did but um he's still a still a quality operator you can see from his starts against sharks and ospreys that uh even though the the legs aren't quite there he's still got more than enough in them and just his intelligence the lines he picks so good i think he probably knows now that he's not, you know, he's not going to be first choice anymore, particularly, and that he's more of a squad player these days. But um, he's clearly happy to play that role, and and he's as important off the field as he is on it for uh, the culture that he sets in the dressing room, but also the uh, way he's going to bring through some of these young lads. Obviously, you can see elements of of what Ray does in what Mason Grady's doing already. Um, but looking at, you know, a couple of guys we'll get on to in a bit, talking about the Wales under-20 squad, somebody like Elijah Evans or Steph Emmanuel coming through in that midfield. You know, there's, I can't think of many better guys to learn off than, than Ray. So uh, good good business by the club. Can't imagine he's on a huge amount of money these days and uh, obviously happy just to take a, a one year and maybe that's a, it's a bit of a swan song as well for him. But uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a it's, uh, good uh, move to bolster the midfield, which was looking... Very, very slim at one point. <laughs> it was just Ben Thomas chucking the ball to himself for, for a couple of months there, but uh, is looking a bit healthier now with uh, Grady resigning and Roy Jennings coming in. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the only thing we the only place we're looking like still now is nines, which rumours are maybe that's been sorted, but just waiting to be announced and potentially uh, another second row. Because I said with Will, Day- with, um, Will Davis King and Dad Hughes going in, that means our hooker and cut head berth at least. Numbers wise, is is filled. Whether people believe that we've got the quality there, I'm still willing to say we do. But yeah, I think with with Dav, we haven't seen much of him, obviously, because I mean Belch has pretty much nailed down the two jersey, and and then uh, Evan Lloyd and Evan Daniel have sort of uh, switched as the the bench option there, which is. You know, I imagine Hughes knew that when he came in that those were the guys who were going with, and he was there as a squad player. But I, the, the only time I can really think of him playing was um, he came off the bench away at Rassin. I thought he was actually pretty good that uh, that evening, to be fair. He's um, somebody who the Scarlets were a bit surprised to let go, I think, uh, back in the last season and uh, obviously got caught up in the, the jersey mess. But um, if he's happy to to sit as a squad player still and, and be a dependable option when called upon. And then I, Will Davis King's an interesting one because... I don't know, was he 25, 26 now? Something like that. Yeah, he's about he's about on a par with um like the uh, he's probably a bit younger than Azarati that yeah and, about, but you know on about par with Carrie, I'd say. Yeah, and yeah. obviously he came to Pro Rugby a little bit later. He didn't do the sort of traditional academy route. He comes via Cardiff Met and playing for Ponty and Cardiff RC in the Prem and then picks up a senior academy deal a bit later than most do. But obviously big bloke um is I don't think he's he's ever looked like dreadful when he's played for us, but he hasn't he hasn't obviously looked like somebody who is going to kick on. But then makes a Wales wide training squad last summer ahead of the World Cup, so they obviously see something. It's not a position we have massive depth in at Cardiff or in Wales generally at tight head, and maybe now next season with Bubba concentrating solely on the scrum, um, there's an opportunity to properly develop guys like. Will Davis King, Reese Litterick, uh, Reese Barrett, who were either younger or on the periphery of the squad a bit, and with sort of some more dedicated coaching resource there, they can they can kick on because you know six three and 
over 100 over 100 kilograms you know, he's it's a big old bloke davis king so if they can harness that properly then there, there is something there i mean when he has played at least in the loose he's definitely shown promise in last season i think you've said in your blog a couple of years ago that you know it was for him to take you know this was it the eight well the 18 jersey more than the two was probably his but and then as a sort of had this huge bump in form and mm-hmm. also there so i think that's that's new science as you alluded to we've had the under 20 squad um key key headline there is steph emmanuel at 17 has been called up do you want to just quickly go through go through the four list that's not many cardiff yeah, so it's a six current Cardiff players. I think I'm right in saying um, it's uh, and it's sort of classic Cardiff for of youngsters for them. It's it's one one back row forward and then all backs. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Lucas De La Rua goes as part of a really exciting looking back row um, in that squad. Uh, then we've got Harry Wild at ten, um, Steph Emmanuel is still an under eighteen player, as well as Cody Stone, who has still played under eighteen rugby this year as well in the in the back three. Um, and then we've got uh, Elijah Evans, who is uh, played most of his rugby at Cardiff Met from Buck Super Rugby this season as a fresher. So it's you know it's relatively uncommon to play that many minutes as a fresher. So he's obviously somebody that they've identified as as a talent. And then Matty Young um, at full back, who has had a few injury issues, I think, but um, has played a fair bit for the Rags at the back end of last season. Looks a bit of a talent as well, and. Obviously, the other thing from a Cardiff point of view is just how many sort of ex-Cardiff pathway lads are in there as well. You got Owen Conker and Harry Bedell as part of the back row stocks. Sam Scott um, at Tight Ted was one of ours before heading off to well, he was Wasps and now he's ended up at Bristol. Uh, Louis Hennessy as well will be pretty key man in the centre there, having gone to Bath from us. So. Uh, Yes, yeah, there's plen- plenty of sort of former kind of representation, but as you know, why Emmanuel and Tom Bowen coming back was such big news was uh, because we do lose so many across the bridge. As, as Steph's brother as well, Johan, is uh, in the is in as a loose head prop. So uh, yeah, as a squad on on the whole, though, I think it's you know there's a lot of continuity from the Six Nations. They finished that pretty strongly. That win over Italy was a good one. Um, couple of players have kicked on again i think max page has got a few social media clips for his performances with clandovery and they're making his scarlet's debut um ryan woodman back fit and captains at blindside and the only sort of loss is uh harry ackerman isn't fit having i think i think he broke his leg um in the six nations so he's, he's not back in there but yeah that uh, certainly uh, i'm looking forward to seeing a back row of de la rua uh probably be harry Bedell and Oh, sorry, it'd be uh, Woodman, De La Rua, and Morgan Morse. Six, seven, eight is uh, pretty decent, I would say. Yeah, that's a pretty decent one. <laughs> I can't think of too many better ones that you can put out at under 20s level. I'm sure someone will try and correct me. Yeah, it's, <laughs> right. It'd be yeah, decent to senior level. Um, I believe all the games of the under 20s World Cup are going to be on YouTube. Uh, yeah, the uh, World Rugby will show them all, but S4C will show the Wales games on, on the telly box as well. Um, and yeah, when. when when I remember what they are, I'll, I'll put up the picture um, on the on the page. Just so people know. Uh, I'm probably more excited about watching that than uh, the upcoming game we're about to preview, <laughs> which is Wales Wales South Africa on Saturday. Uh, the, the 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 minnow game for the mighty Barbas v Fiji clash. Uh, so blue and black's news. So we have eight and eight in the twenty match day twenty three. So you've got both of them. Jim both of them at start at seven. Ellis Bevan makes his debut at Scrum Half, the first debut in four years, which people love saying, so I thought I'd put that stat in <laughs> as well. Mason Grady starts for the first time, I believe, ever at 12, and Cam Winnett has pushed Sanjay to wing uh, to start at fullback, which I think is a good sign of what Gavin thinks about him. Uh, then on the bench, Evan Lloyd and Kieran Azarati make it two-thirds of the uh, placement uh, front row and then we've got Big Mac in the 20s and Jacob Beetham at 23 who I think is probably covering 10, 15 I mean in theory 12 as well but I mean <laughs> if you've got Eddie James on there I don't think you need him as top cover there um, big big shout out to former blue and black man James Ratty who's getting hit who's set for his debut off the bench which I think almost everyone agrees it's well deserved so your thoughts on 
from a Cardiff point of view, I think it's another tick in the box for what we've been doing this season, bringing the youngsters through. You know, I, I don't think many would have uh, put the length of that list of Cardiff players who made their debut for Wales uh, this season uh, where it is, you know, with Beetham and Bevan joining Winnet and Mann and Mac Martin um, and all the guys who, uh, who appeared during the Six Nations. So, yeah, from a purely Cardiff point of view, I think it's great. I think, uh, obviously... Unfortunate losing Jack Morgan, not something you'd want. And uh, is it like sort of bad injury luck seems to continue, but great for both of them. I, I personally think he should have been in the original squad anyway, um, but great for him to come in and get the start at seven as well, which obviously he's played most of his test rugby in the six jersey so far. So be interesting to see how he goes there. Um, but it's, it's a big physical back row. And then, um, Bevan's obviously the the standout headline there, starting ahead of Gareth Davis and Kieran Hardy. Um, I think you know he, there's a there's it's easier to understand what Gatlin likes about him and his size and his left foot kicking option. He he has improved with the run of games we've had towards the back end of the season, and I think the beauty for him in this one is that just on the game generally is that no no one expects Wales to do anything this weekend. You know, there's there's not a single I I can't imagine the bookies are taking much money other than the odd one pound punts on Wales just causing an upset. So um for Bevan to go in against the team that the Springboks have named, you know, there's no pressure. Yeah, yes, there's pressure in a test match, but there's no no added pressure at all of of needing to win or anything. You can just go out there, play his game. Um looking at the Springboks back three, they might fancy that there's a chance to sort of get on top of them if you uh if you kick from from our right wing a bit with Liam Williams chasing Mason Grady getting after them as well. You know, we've got a fair bit of height in that back line. Um, Owen Dyer as well was fantastic at chasing. Yeah, he's, he's a great chaser. He can get off the ground. Um, so we've got we've got a chance to get above them there. And Bevan, with those left-footed, high-hanging box kicks, you know, he's caused a lot of teams a lot of trouble this season with them when he gets them right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's somewhere we'll be looking for him. And then also, I think one of Bevan's other strengths is uh, he's... Well, he's sort of come through the Thomas Williams school of uh, of being impactful in transition as well. He likes to pop up in in midfield. He likes to get his hands on the ball in open plays. Big, he's physical, he's quick. Um, so I think that'll be somewhere for him uh, to impact the game. And yeah, just to echo your comments on on James Ratty, like he should have been in the squad as well. I'm glad he's in the squad ahead of certain other members of of the initially announced squad. Um, Probably should be starting to be honest, uh, just as an extra carrying option in that second row. But uh, um, I think he'll have a good impact off the bench. And after was it two two capless camps he was in before? I think he was called up twice and yeah. not not get anything. Yeah, to, I think to... I that's last two campaigns. Yes. Uh, so to finally get, I don't his know if he, I don't know if he did Gatlin's first Six Nations. Yeah, I can't remember. But... No, I can't. But yeah, great, great to see him on there, and uh, hopefully he has a, a decent impact off the bench as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no Ben Thomas, who's apparently not trained fully, so he's got a bit of a niggle. But by all accounts, Gatlin's very, it's very happy with how he has trained. So good for him. No idea why no Domachowski. Do you think it's just giving Matthias a run out? I guess. Yeah. I I would have thought he'd have been. Then you'd have at least had a full front row that's worked together a lot. Yeah, um, I was a bit surprised at that one. Um, I just as well because. Matthias, Matthias, I, I don't mind Matthias. I think he's got a decent ceiling, but as of right now, he, his scrummaging isn't a, a strength of his necessarily. And I don't know what benefit there would be necessarily to him being absolutely mullered for half an hour before going out to Australia and potentially being called on there. So, uh, yeah, not too sure on that one. But I think Gatlin's seen enough of Dommer over the last year now to know what he's about and, and know what sort of strengths he brings. So I'm, I don't think there's a concern that he's been like dropped or anything. It's probably just a, a management issue there, uh, sort of game time management. Because he, he's played a lot for us this season, to be fair, to having gone to the World Cup and then come back and hasn't been injured particularly, gone to Six Nations and then come straight back into it as well. So, uh, yeah, and then I think just on the game as a whole. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Like I can't think of anything where we can properly like target the spring box to, to win it. I mean, their, their squad, despite uh, they're missing bulls players and European players, I think. Is that right? Yeah, it's basically, yeah, basically the, the, the non SA, the non SA or Japan based players. 
And I mean, um, yeah, so it's yeah, still so, so, so strong. About, so someone was talking about how this is Jaden Hendricks who could be starting at ten. It's going to be his first cap, and there's a few other like Davy Thompson. You're like, yeah, but Jaden Hendricks there is up against someone who's had about ten, eleven caps. Yeah. But next, but either side of him is someone who's played in his first start position and his first and his first cap. And you've got Andre Esther Hazen, who hasn't got many box caps, but has had an awful, <laughs> you know, as well as Savage and Nick and Faf de Klerk, who is a double World Cup winner. <laughs> yeah, it's, and, yeah. It's, and I like, think yeah. um, just on um, the centres as well, like obviously Grady at 12 and Watkin at 13. I, w- I would be interested to see how often they switch and and whether they, they do stay quite rigid in that or whether they, they switch it up quite a bit. Obviously, naturally, they're the other way around. Um, Grady, yeah, he's never worn 12, like you said. Yeah, but he did have a, a fair stint there against Italy in that last game and uh, in the Six Nations and, and looked relatively impressive. And I think maybe there's an element of matching up there to put him up against Esther Hazen. Um, uh, physically and, and try and match that. But there, there is an opportunity if they're clever with their attacking game with, you know, Costello likes to um, drift wide and get moving away from first receiver and get out into the wider channels. You've got Winnit, who is equally comfortable popping up first receiver, second receiver, or outside the 13 channel. Watkin, who is a, a good out-to-in carrier from 13. I think I like him when he hits that line. He's not quite got enough pace to go around the outside for me necessarily at a test level, but but he's also equally comfortable at first receiver and and playing there. And then you've got Grady who, if we're honest in attack, his best position is not in a position. <laughs> yeah. if, if you're designing an attack around Mason Grady, which with his talents you really should be doing, it's it's effectively just saying like, you know, don't worry about being in a position, just worry about being where you can impact the game the most and whether that's as a as a decoy runner or as hitting a short line or going around using his pace getting around the outside you know he's got all the tools a few more forward pods yeah just sort of being that tip on and then all of a sudden you know and all of a sudden you tip on and then there's the accelerate because he because he can accelerate quite well well. look at um the try he scored against i'm going to say stormers the one where ellis jenkins is mic'd up and uh Mm -hmm. and he talks to Mackenzie martin that's off a, you know, it's a uh, sort of a middle P, I don't know what you would call that, a gap in the middle of the line out, um, where Grady just goes straight through and bursts over and scores. So, yeah, if you if you can square up a couple of forwards around the fringes of the rug, you can certainly get him space there because his acceleration is mad. For a big bloke, he, he gets up to top speed so quickly. Um, so, yeah, that, that would be, it would be interesting. Like, you know, there's so many different things you could do with him in attack and, I suppose the concern is that the Welsh camp is not particularly innovative in that sort of regard. Um, but uh, hopefully, uh, who is the attack coach in these days? Is it Alex King? It's still Alex King, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think he's necessarily the worst, but I think the problem is, is when you're trying to develop one of these attacks, it takes time to bed in and you don't really have it because a lot of the key components we've had recently have been English-based, so yeah. that's, that causes you a problem, which... You know, it's one of the sides of the capital that people don't realise is actually if you want to develop new systems quickly, you need the time. You know, yeah. the reason why, you know, even though Andy Farrell took essentially the Leinster team, it still took him two years to get that, that Ireland attack, which was the Leinster attack, but it yeah. just took longer. But yeah, otherwise, um, I think second row, I, I kind of get. Like if Carter, Carter, Screech and Ratty are your three locks, I kind of get why he's done it that way round. Because Carter and Screech have played an awful lot together back end of this season. Mm. So, you know, it's it's a second row combo who work very well. They know how their line out calls go. And the Dragons line out's actually been pretty good. Yeah, you know, it's been one of the best better ones in the in the URC. Yet. So I kind of get that. Then maybe you'd have wanted James Ratty as one of the only Osprey's locks in the squad. The only fit when the only fit off is not going up, you know, being there for Derry Lakes so someone who, you know, those two have worked together. But I think that, that I, would, I thought we'd have had a we'd have seen LHD felt, but I think he's got a niggle. Ah, uh, okay. So it's so I think there's things that he may not make it on the make he might not make it on the plane if he's not likely to be fit. 
Yeah, it'd be interesting to see who the... It's five now, I guess, isn't it? The five players he has to drop. Is well, it? I suppose, no, it's only four. I know they've seen numbers of a five, but when you've got to remember, is Jack Morgan's been released from the squad because oh, he's yes, true. unfortunately injured. So if it is only four, so I think they are looking at probably... Like, you know, I thought James Botham might be one. Who, you know, was being dropped was Raffle was available, but I'm guessing he's going to go. So you're probably looking at yeah. two tight... One, maybe two tight heads and a hooker. And then one of the outside backs, I imagine. It's interesting with the tight heads because if they do drop two tight heads, then one of them will presumably be Azarati because I don't understand otherwise why you would name uh, Archie Griffin in a... Archie Griffin and Dylan Lewis presumably are definitely going to go because they haven't been in camp yet. So they've been named with Australia in mind. Mm-hmm. And then Henry Thomas starts this weekend. So I don't know, it, it, like it obviously doesn't necessarily mean he's ahead or not, but I think Gatlin probably likes what he's, uh, you know, Thomas was ahead of Azarati at the World Cup. And um, I think he's put him ahead. He's obviously likes the, the experienced scrummaging that he brings. So I, it would be a surprise though, because I think Azarati has been very really good for us this season, to be honest. And it's still only 26, 27, it's still got, ways to go to you know he could be 31 by the time he hits his peak scrummaging wise so yeah but that would be a disappointment for him I think it would be decent for Cardiff but uh, it would be an odd one the weird one for me is Harry O'Connor because I'd have thought this if you were going to you know I, I saw him as being more, one of those more fringe guys and I thought I thought you'd have seen him involved in this game because I thought Henry Thomas or Azarati one of those two was going to be going in and be or basically the three of them I don't know if that's because Gatton's already decided Harry O'Connor's not quite ready. Hmm. Or he's got Harry O'Connor and um, Archie Griffin earmarks for that um, game against the Rebels. Yeah. The Rebels. Yeah, it's the Rebels, isn't it? Uh, no, it's the Reds. Um, no, the Rebels have folded the Reds. Yes. Back, right? <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, it'd be interesting to see what he does there. And then I suppose maybe a, it could yeah, it could be a centre that goes potentially. we got a couple, a couple of got Eddie James, Owen Watkin, Ben Thomas, Mason Grady, Nick Tompkins still to come in as well, who presumably is guaranteed to go. As again, you you think all English based players who haven't been in the camp yet will go to Australia? Otherwise, there wasn't really any point naming them in the squad to begin with. So, well, the only thing I can think of is if they've basically gone. Well, if these guys have the storm then against <laughs> South Africa, then I might might Pumped drop them. them. Yeah, but. I said, I think the re- I think that's the reason why we've got Eddie James on the bench. Eddie James and Beatham on the bench is really probably one of those two. I th- it's weird Beatham covering ten mind. Like he's he's a great player and he's got sort of the game intelligence, but I don't, I don't know. Like I mean, he hasn't played it since age grade for Cardiff. Yeah, it's, it's a long time. I think, since I, think I think you remember him at one point in the Wales under twenties. He stepped in there because of injuries. But yeah, it's, that I mean, was a brick class. I mean, Costello's playing eighty, unless he unless he has an injury. I think, well, I think that's, that's the thing. Which is like Costello is, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't categorize him as injury prone necessarily, but he's not been the fittest over the last sort of like twelve to eighteen months. He, he hasn't played. You know, the the issue with him in the Six Nations was that he hadn't played regularly for the Scarlets, building up to it, and he's been there or thereabouts, but he, he has, I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, he's a hundred percent flying match fit to play 80 every weekend. You know, you look at a Tina Stabia who just seems to keep going and going versus a Costello who gets hooked a fair bit and doesn't start every game. So yeah, against a massive South African team who could legitimately crush him. I mean, it is a bit of a risk. Especially because he is at, for, for all, you know, people talk about his so he does punch above his weights. Mm. When he does have to carry, he does carry quite hard. And he is a very good tackler, but yeah, I mean, you still have the mass, the mass movie mass thing, of, that is going to put you into problems. I mean, Evan Roos is anyway. going to come off the back of a scrum and run directly for him early in that game. <laughs> yeah, like, Esther Hazen will be targeted. In yeah. that channel. and then outside you've got the very small Jesse Creel. <laughs> Yeah, and, I mean, if, and if they really smart. want to mix it up, they could throw Makazola up in B, who isn't exactly <laughs> a tiny man either. It's uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, like they got some good, like Feinberg and Zomlu, I think his name is, is quite a, a decently sized man on the bench as well. You know, yeah, there's they, well, he's they, a ten. He's sort of like the the sort of David Willemser two point isn't he? A sort of 
twelve slash fifteen who covers ten and yeah, yeah, he's a great he's a great player. He's got a great skill set and and yeah, South Africa. I mean, it's effectively, almost the inverse of what we use Beetham as in terms yeah. of like the like the, the sort of priority list. <laughs> Yeah, right, it's, I, yeah, it's quite I, interesting when you think about it. like you think about some of the bench things, but then you look at like their back row and it's like uh double double World Cup winner, quite, you know, and probably bench player of the year, Quagga Smith. Uh, I don't know how he's gonna go from the start. Then you've got former world player of the year, even Stephen Toy. I mean, the ones who apparently, according to Razi, is gonna be out for blood because uh the last time he captain the box is when we beat them in DC. Who was it? <laughs> that seems a long time ago now. <laughs> it feels like a long time ago. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and then Evan Rose, who I'll be honest, I, I get what I get. I see why people like him, but I also I don't think he's their best eight option, especially not with how Cameron Heineken has been coming up. Who is not? Who is saying he is definitely South African? No, that's what he's they all say. The <laughs> No, their their team is bad. I think Russ Petty, um, if anyone follows him on Twitter, I think he's R Petty eighty, did a stat that Eben Etzebet with one hundred and nineteen caps has more caps than the entire Wales starting pack combined. As long That's as you don't count, Wales. yeah, as long as you don't count Henry Thomas's England caps. But um, it counts negative if anything. <laughs> I mean that that's a ridiculous stat in itself, and yeah, they're they're ty- the starting type five of and Che Marks Cock Etzebet Mostert. I mean for a for a team that's supposedly a changed team, I, I that that walks into our starting type five. So uh can't imagine many packs in the world where you would say no to any of those. <laughs> yeah, it's, I I I I can't remember what the final score was when we played them in that last World Cup warm up game. Did they put? It was sixty on something. Yeah, so I, that I've... was that was that weird game where basically our backline was just the full experimental. Let's just give everyone a cap. Yeah. It, oh, I mean, yeah, it could yeah, end yeah. up like that on Saturday, to be fair. <laughs> so... I'd, like, I'd like to think there's a little bit more. Like, there's a little... I mean, there's not much experience, but I'd like to think that, you know, the likes of Watkin and Sanjay in there sort of helping Marshall and, and win it, I think. I think San- Sanjay would be an interesting one because, obviously, like, I don't, I, I think I've said before, like, I only see clips of the Japanese league, but it, I, it looks on the whole crap. I mean, it's just general, like it's got some obviously some big names in there, but there's and it, I think speed wise they play at a decent speed and there's a decent skill level, but just you you don't need to be very physical to to win it necessarily. So Liam Williams, who missed the middle of his team season through injury, so he's still picking up injuries even out there, and now comes straight back into a test against the Springboks, having not played in probably six weeks, two months, something like that. Um, it'd be interesting to see how he goes because I've never been a massive fan of him on the wing generally. Um, yeah, I get what you mean. He's 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 obviously a world class fullback. He does a job on the wing, but I I wouldn't be able to say to recall a game where I was like, oh, that was a man of the match showing from Liam Williams off the wing. I think I think it's the right decision to start him there this weekend just to add some height to that back three. And uh, you know, because the issue is the other option is Giles. Great season, don't get me wrong, and and deserves to be in the squad, but a a starting back three of Giles, Dyer, and Winnet is absolutely tiny. No matter how good they are in the air or their work rate, like you just you know look at Grady's try he scored against the Ospreys on on New Year's Day. He didn't even jump against that Ospreys back three. He just sort of ran in and caught it and then went under the post. So um, ultimately, you can you can be good in the air as, as somebody like Winnet is, but if you're coming up against a six foot three guy who's also really good in the air, he'll probably win most of the time. So. That's why Williams being in there makes sense, just to add a bit of height and uh, like a different like type of physicality. But yeah, that back that back line does have potential to pick up injuries and early on, and then you're botching at at some point. You know, Beetham and and James are, are both really good young players and have had good seasons, but. Uh, are, are not you know experienced at club level even let alone test level. I mean, I suppose the first wing injury is going to end up going to it's going to basically Mason Grady moves Grady. switches from twelve to wing, isn't he? Yeah, which actually might make the attack work a little bit better if you actually get him to run in almost in that Josh Adams role for Cardiff. Yeah, the one I mean, one thing I do think we do have, might have an advantage is looking at the th- the back three we've got. They are all very good aerially. Hmm. And I'd say it's probably the weakness of 
probably most South African back threes. Yeah. Especially if they haven't got like the likes of Colby or um Kit Rianza, who, you know, although they're diminutive, they, they spring up. And you know, I think I think like that is what you know, one of the few highlights against that Lions game was I think we did manage to get the better of Bund uh, in, in the air at least. And Athlea Fass is the most solid high ball high ball fullback. He's a fantastic counter attack with running when he's in no pressure. And I think you're just hoping on that midfield being a little bit slower turning, thinking over the top, and just trying to pull them here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, I, think if we, game. If, I don't. I don't think we can do what Gatland always does against South Africa, which is drag them to the gutters. Because I think we <laughs> lose quite quite handily. Yeah, a kicking game's got to be spot on, both like for for distance and for um, particularly for for competitive uh aerial battles i think if we if we kick loose like yeah you're right that uh, like van der Merwe isn't the strongest in the air fat i was surprised to see fassi in the squad at all to be honest uh, i think he's a little bit lucky to be in the, the wider springbok squad maybe it's just obviously they're missing a few um from the bulls team and, and from from europe but um they will still if we kick loose they will kill us with the counter attack uh so yeah Big big games for for Costello and for uh, Bevan in particular in that sense, um, particularly because without Ben Thomas there, there isn't like a, a recognised backup kicking option. We, I, you know, win it has got a good boot on him, but Cardiff don't really use him as as kicking in open play massively. Other than kick tennis times, we don't go to him uh, as a sort of to start any kick tennis. Uh, Watkin is a handy footballer, but is again isn't isn't quite what you would go to as a, a backup. Uh, long kicking option, so yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be heavy on the halfbacks on the day to to really get us uh, in that kicking battle and and in that aerial battle and and if the ball you know if if the game does become unstructured like that that that's one area where I'd really like to see Wales kick on this summer is that we we have such exciting talent in broken play and counter attacking, but we just looked really clueless uh, when it came to counter-attacking in the Six Nations. A couple of times, you know, the ball gets turned over and uh, we're, we're slow to get in positions. We're very flat as well when we do try and go wide. There's no, you know, just simple like pass and draw stuff. But, you know, the best teams work really hard in those scenarios to give themselves depth and to, to manipulate the space that appears on turnover ball. We... Yeah, it's just it's very much like whoever gets the ball on turnover ball, best of luck off you go. Try and create something by yourself, and and that's not you know the way to to properly take advantage of those scenarios. So, if there's one area that I'd love to see Wales, not just in this game but over the course of the summer as well, get a lot better, is that if we could score two or three tries and turnover ball, and make that something uh, something of a, a sort of uh, a USP for us then I think that'd be a, a successful summer overall. Yeah. Um, I said, do you think a big part of that is, is you know, part of the reason why the thought of having beaten and Ben Thomas potentially coming on at 12 or 15 is going to help having that extra secondary person to help pull, in, pull the back line into shape? And even yeah. Boston forwards in, in, in to get them where there's... So do you think a lot of those two in Six Nations was a lot of actually sometimes the four has been a bit too slow to react to clean out to get back clean out to that first phase so that we've got a quick ball to hmm. go whilst it's disorganized yeah and and it'll help having uh i think shunzer will be a big help in that regard as well when we get to australia uh, i know I, th- I think there's a maybe a slight misconception around him in that you know he is a big unit but i think people are expecting him to be sort of like this bulldozer physical guy when Actually, the athletic side of his game is is what he like prefers to use, is what he goes to. So him getting around the pitch, getting to breakdowns and and securing us quick ball, but also contributing himself on turnover. He's he's not slow. <laughs> you know, he's, he can he can exploit that space. That'll be big. And Plumtree is the other one as well. I think will help in that regard. Um, I now this could be an interest. Oh, Sorry. go on, go on. Yeah, no, I'll let you finish your point now. Go on. So oh. My point with this too. I, I I really like what I've seen of him. It's not ma- massive amounts, obviously, because of his injury. We saw him a little bit in the warm-ups and then a, a bit for the Scarlets over the last few weeks. But he's he seems to have everything that a a six, and particularly under Gatland, would would need in in that he's athletic, but and physical and quick, and has a 
as you'd expect for somebody who's coming through the New Zealand system, has a good understanding of the game as well. Um, good skill set when he gets the ball in his hands. So yeah, with with the likes of of Shunzer and Plumtree coming back in, Wainwright still be in there. Both of them will add a bit as well. Where um, I imagine once Raffle Raffle starts probably against the Wallabies, but both of them is your obvious bench choice. There is six, seven, eight um, coming off the bench. So. Yeah, I think yeah, if we if we're not counterattacking now and and really using the forwards as athletes to staff these breakdowns, then we probably never will. Yeah, so the, the bits I want to go. So the one thing I, you know, everyone was having to go at Junza because he wasn't because they were all expecting him because he's so big to <laughs> basically making these big busts and carries, and it's like yeah, but it's not looking. If you actually look what he's been employed to do at both Exeter and Cardiff, he's there to nuke breakdowns and he nukes the breakdown. Yeah. And you know that, then frankly, that's good enough for me because if, if you can get what if you've only got one person clearing out, you know, a load of defenders, so you can get the ball away, great. That that that's almost as good as having a really, a, you know, game line busting carry mm. because you're still getting quick ball, you're still forcing the defense back. Um, Plunchy, I'm still, I I think you know I I need to. I'm probably going to watch him record for this game probably more <laughs> so than 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 I necessarily would have because. That cameo for the home gate fixture against England before the World Cup, he did look really good coming on against this disorganised defence. And again, I feel like the role change where Chunza was just churning through work, dropping people, hitting rucks. Plumtree was there to do all the show pony stuff. <laughs> and then in the second, in the return fixture against Turkey, you know, I thought actually he was... Because there wasn't another person doing all the, the hard work and it wasn't like it was a tight defence, I think he did struggle a bit and I... I'm not sure because he had has a like sort of like Alex Craig, Dan Davis doing an awful lot of grunt work for him at, at the Scarlets, and actually Karen Tupelotto has been weirdly Karen Tupelotto, even though he's been named as a number eight and been playing number eight, he is probably more that traditional six role of just a heart, just someone who gets through all the all the hard work. Um, I think that has uh, freed him up to do all these other fancy things. So I think that maybe that's where both of them could be fantastic because. As great as he is, I think his best. I think he's best when he's just doing the flashy shit. Well, and you notice him when you start looking at the stats. You know, it's like oh, he's got three turnovers. Oh, he's tackled every single member of player on the team <laughs> twice. Like you know, that, you're like oh, okay. I think they have some of the best games he has when he's not. You know, where he's letting other players play well. Yeah, it's, it's a good reminder for when discussing team selections and stuff over, the, particularly against the Wallabies games, that, you know, I I think a Squidge always makes a really good point around when the Lions squad is selected um, and it, it carries over into, you know, national team squads and, and uh, 23 selections as well. Is it, you're not just selecting the 23 best players, you're selecting the 23 players who will give you the best chance to win. And and that's that's always some I think I, I'm guilty of losing sight of it sometimes. Just think, well, this guy's been in great form, put him in. But you, you know, there has to be particularly, you know, in those back five forwards, particularly um with what you want to do with your midfield, you have to pick the players that will get you the results, not just the best players necessarily in that position at that time. So yeah, it's, it's always handy to remember that one. Same with the whole thing with Morgan Morris, who is doing really well in both attack and defence. But the way Gatlin wants his eight to be, he wants him to be a good line-out option, and he wants him to be an edge forward, a com- you know, so he's comfortable out wide. That's not Morgan Morris. Morgan Morris is definitely more that tight carrying. You know, he's he's the person who you hit off first phase, which is Gatlin tends to use the seven or up for that. You know, sort of you know either put the peel off or or whatever. So. You know, Morgan Morris is playing the wrong position. If he stayed in his natural position, his original position of seven, he probably would be a decent, mm-hmm. decent shape. The only problem was he'd never get any game time behind Tipperick and Jack Morgan. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so, you know, swings and rooms, but but yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. And I think seeing what he does with the front row in terms of how they're going to be playing, because you know, so Hugh Hugh or Catboy. Uh, he was he was there pointing out how Azarati was in like one of the top tight heads for carries and meters and passes in the URC, and then Six Nations he was that like um like you know like this is everyone else and he's here because and then you look but his ruck work is like through the roof because Gatland likes a tight head prop to just hit ruck. It's like well are you really using Azarati best 
there, or do you actually want him on the ball a bit more? And actually, he's surprisingly really good hands, you know, when it, when, you know, when you see him get out, you know, maybe does he change that? And, you know, I think that's maybe in the past when Kerry has played for Wales, he hasn't been used the best because they're trying to get him to clear up ruts, which is very much a weakness in this game, I think. <laughs> Defensively, pretty decent, but I find that he's probably not the best attacking ruck, but then you're using him as a primary carrier, so why would you knacker him out cleaning out ruts? Um, yeah, so yeah, what was it? The, the ben, I said the thing that really find weird is you've got effectively the two thirteens in the squad, and then you've got two twelves on the bench, or a wing, or you know, a fifteen, twelve, and a twelve. Like, that was the one. But I feel that so much as much. There's no one else left, <laughs> yeah. and it's not like we've got. It's not like we've got the forwards to uh, to say, "Oh, we'll go for a six-two. <laughs> um, I a question for you. I I wrote on my blog this week just about what. What does a successful summer look like for Wales? Um, and uh, my conclusion was that it should include one win over Australia, probably, um, who are in a sort of flux mode themselves. Joe Smith has just come in. Obviously, Eddie's left. They're, the game he over there is, is, it, yeah, is in a, an absolute state. Rebels have gone bust. A couple of lads are going to the NRL. Obviously, they got the Lions next summer and then their home World Cup two years after that. So is that is that being over the top after a wooden spoon to ask for Wales to win just one, or at least one game out there? Or is it more just about continuing to build? I mean, I think one thing is, you've got to remember is, excuse me, is um, Joe Schmidt is probably one coach who has managed to get the better of Gatton more than anyone. <laughs> I mean, I'll just I'll just put that I'll just have that in there. But I think he's 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 worked out he works out Gatlin's plans very quickly. Um, so I think it'd have to be the first test. Like we'd have to win that first test. We're going to win either. I think the Rebels game, the, the Reds game, sorry, is a non-negotiable. I think you've got to win that. You can't be going okay, even if it is going to be our experimental side. I think you, you can't be booking a provincial test and then saying, "Well, we wanted to play somewhere other that it, that didn't happen." <laughs> For this for this experimental test, and then you get buggered on it. Um, and I think for the game this weekend, I think we've got to keep it respectable. I'm not saying we're going to win. I'm not, I'm not even going to say we're going to do a card and stay within seven. But you know, if we can keep, it, it can't be like that that game last year. I think if it goes much more than about twenty points, then and, and you know, I think. Overall, it's the cliche, but I think the performance and we've got to see promise, and it's got to look better than the Italy game. You know, we did on the Italy game, and then each game we've got to look better and more cohesive as a unit. You know, I think that lineup needs to be a bit slicker. Um, actually, I, 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 I counterpoint I have to say, but you know, the scrum needs to look. I I don't expect it to be a dominant scrum against the, the box, no, but I think it should at least be able to hold its own, which the day we usually are okay with. Our props seem to be all right. You know, they we, we will leak a few penalties, but we certainly don't get demolished because I feel like that's not how we scrimmage. And I think it's a, a good style of scrimmage in the count of the box. Um, but, you know, I, and, you know, everything's just got to look that little bit more polished. The fence needs to take another step up, although I thought the fence was mostly all right, actually, in the Six Nations. I think the problem for us was we made so many, we just were very bad at relieving the pressure. And, you know, we just had so, you know, we just had to defend for so long that uh, that's where a lot of these points got racked up. Um, but one, one thing I, I want to flip on with you is obviously we've, Gatlin confirmed that the new World Rugby initiatives are going to be coming in. And um, one of them being the no scrum on a reset, no um, scrum option for resets and free kicks. So you can reset a scrum, but, you know, any free kicks and no scrums. Do you think that's probably going to help? our perceived weakness of the scrum. Yeah. There's only there's only so many things that you can you can get free kicks for at a scrum. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree on the general point just on the scrum with what you say this weekend about parity is that I think people will expect us to get absolutely destroyed. But actually if you look at the the, the respective starting type fives, remove the experience level Weight wise, we sort of stack up relatively well. I mean, Gareth Thomas is a is now I've been our starting loose head for two years as an experienced guy. Henry Thomas, England caps, Wales caps, been there and done it in the sort of the top fourteen, is an experienced scrummager. Derry Lakes, big bloke, um, you know, captain, and then 
Screech and Carter, Carter's bulked up considerably. I know it's been said a bit and it's becoming a bit like sort of Van der Fly has improved his uh, his carry in a bit and <laughs> talking about Carter bulking up. But he, he is like, it's noticeable when he came back for the Dragons in the back end of last season that he is a, a, a different level of uh, physicality now. And Screech, you know... He's not. Uh, he's not a, a top quality operator necessarily, with with respect to him. But he's he's still a sizable bloke. You know, he's thirty one now, good age for for a lock. Um, so just in purely that uh, level, I, I don't think the scrums will necessarily be as much of a bloodbath as some are, are making out. But yeah, with with the initiatives, I think there's element. There's you know there's there's possibility to be clever about if you are going to take a free kick or not at a certain time, and then they have to. Well, depending on where they are on the field, tap it or or kick it back to you. Um, yeah, it, it was obviously. I don't know if it's been brought in immediately off the back of the Springboks calling uh, calling scrums off marks, but it's, in, it's inconspicuous timing, if not. So, uh, um, yeah, it's, it can. I yeah, in, I don't know whether it's a, a positive or negative for Wales, but it's a negative for the Springboks certainly. <laughs> I think it. I think it does hamper one of their biggest strengths. Or you know, they have. Or they're going to win. Or they're going to have to win scrimmages so convincingly that it's just go straight to penalty. Yeah. But yeah, and then obviously the other ones that the Pont Law has come in. So now we've got to make. Now we've got to be extra squeaky clean. Which you know, actually, if you look at a lot of penalties, a lot of these players can give away. They are offsides. It's certainly in Six Nations as well. You know, we were a little bit slow to react to get back and make sure we got back. You know, I think you know if if um if Mike Paulshaw is not saying if you think you're at the back of the ruck taking another bet step back, you know that that old thing that you know your coach is always telling you coach is always telling your defenses if you think you're on side go back another step. <laughs> <laughs> the other initiative um, um, this weekend I saw Charlie Morgan in the I think he's in the Telegraph Charlie Morgan uh, saying about the TMOs are going to be m- more involved in like calling forward passes and knock-ons live during the game. Um, I don't know if that's like all summer or specifically just at Twickenham on Saturday with the double header. Um, but I d- it did make me laugh that the game they've chosen to do that on is the Barbarians against Fiji. I mean, that poor TMO is going to be constantly <laughs> forward, 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 knock-on. <laughs> It's just gonna you're just gonna be whoever's in the middle just going it's aggressively flat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> aggressively it's gonna be, flat, it's gonna be unplugging worry. him at some point. <laughs> I I can't remember who it was. There was definitely a refereeing performance where the TMO was trying to call in, and I'm sure the ref was like, "I don't care." <laughs> vibes might, might might be in a Roman black game, to be fair, because you know he is a man who likes his vibes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these new laws, I hope hopefully it doesn't come into play, but I presume that means a 20 minute red card as well, which I'm very much against. I will never not be against. So like I said I hope that's because actually mm. these are two teams that don't you know they don't tend to do things like that you know but I don't think I think that is like neither Wales nor South Africa have um, conceded a red card for a high tackle certainly since that since that, that, that initial pad down oh, so yeah I hadn't thought about that really but yeah it's probably probably true because both you know basically both that the defence coaches said I mean especially given how prevalent Wales use choke tackles as one of their main ways of slowing down ball. I like about an out jackal threats. Mm. You tend to be more holding them up. So that's actually quite a encouraging thing. Yeah. Not to say we don't give away penalties for high tackles, but <laughs> we just give away penalties for everything else instead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I think yeah, that's the other thing is discipline's got to be key because if we're constantly in R22, we are going to, we will buckle and break because every team would. And when you've got the sort of yeah, ferocious carrying power of that they have the box to the niche. Yeah, well, I mean, one name we didn't even suggest we've got they've got Damien Dialende coming off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about blind force objects. Uh, you know, yeah, you, you don't get much worse than that. So yeah, I think. Oh no, probably. I mean, shall we just move on to predictions and then wrap up? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so uh, on you, go on you first. Oh, I don't. I'd, I don't want to be like over the top negative. I don't want to be, want to be somewhat realistic at the same time. Um, I'm I'm pinning my hopes on 
obviously it's been a few weeks now since a couple of these guys played and the both teams has relatively new sort of combinations. So I'm I'm hoping for a sort of cagey first 20, 25 minutes before the Springboks properly get into their fat into their stride. Um let's go South Africa. I think they're probably gonna cross 50, aren't they? <laughs> um I'll just end there. I'll give them I'll give them South Africa 48, but Wales. Well, I don't, they'll run away and score a few tries. I think forty-eight twenty-seven. I mean, that that that's sort of my sort of what I was saying is like we're not, you know, it's it's ob- it clear, win, clear and obvious wins. They're not, not. It doesn't look like we've been completely prison chained. Yeah. Even if the game's felt <laughs> felt feels like that. Uh, I'm not going to give an exact score line because I, I I never get anywhere near the <laughs> score lines. But I'd say I say box by about twenty to twenty-five. I think, and I think that's prob. Looking at the two teams, that would be quite a good result for Wales. Yeah, I was just looking at uh well, I was looking at Sky Bet, but other bookies are available. Um and they've got uh Wales at plus eighteen, which I think I would just about back the spring box of that, but it would yeah, they would uh, hopefully be pretty close to that sort of thing. Yeah. I think as long as it's not one of those games where I predict and it's so much even when I predict a negative result and it's so so much work. Yeah. <laughs> I think like Wales, I think Wales Island for the rap I predicted like Ireland by about 20 or something, and that game happened. And I just went, oh. <laughs> and I think, unless there's anything else you want to talk about, for oh, I suppose, do we want to do our news or do we want to reveal it later in the week? Uh, we'll we'll just say for now that uh, we're there's almost certainly a special guest on next week uh, and so keep an eye on our socials and uh, on who it is and and I'm sure there'll be people wanting to send some questions in for them yeah so yeah so we've got special guests next week and hopefully we've got a few more uh, coming out throughout the summer as there will be very little rugby rugby so we'll uh, we'll fill, try and fill it out with guests uh, won't guarantee a pod every week but we'll try to keep it there as we said last week and all that's left in this is for me to say thank you very much, Stan, for joining me. Cheers, Ali. Uh, get well soon, Carwin. And thank you all for listening. Ta-ra.